Long-time viewers might have already noticed that something's a little bit off. I'm not wearing a tie. That's because I have a great story to tell you guys to open this video with, and I don't want to ruin the surprise, so let's jump into that. A few weeks back, I went up to Orem for a 3D printing get-together and met a lot of really cool people that I very much appreciated doing. There was a, a bit of a uh, problem on the way up there. And hey, big thanks to Doug from Line by Line for bailing me out and giving me my first ride in a Tesla. Super cool. But I was going to this thing as the 3D printing professor, but when I got there, I had not brought a tie with me. So there was a secondhand store right across the street. I was going to go there and I was going to get a penance tie. You know what I'm talking about? Big old belly warmer tie, big old ugly thing from the 70s, paisley, however nasty I could get it. As I walked into this secondhand store, a place where anybody could go and visit, I was greeted with, j there was just one tie that I could see right smack dab in the middle, one that everybody else should have seen and everybody else should have taken, but no, it was still there and it was for me. I could see no other tie. That it was a yellow and red stripe tie with a familiar emblem on the bottom. I have been sorted. I am officially a Gryffindor. Pretty happy about that. Now that you guys know the tie, I should put it on. Hey, a little bit of magic there. I've been working on a project lately that I think it's about time that I show to you guys. A little while ago, I put out on social media and even here on YouTube, a video of a crackable egg being printed. Now this particular egg was one of my own design, but this little project started when I found a similar egg by Astroprint. Now, of course, the first thing I did with this egg was I took it into Blender to figure out how it did what it did the way that it did it. See, it was one solid object and it just got thicker and thinner. It was 0.6 millimeters where it was thick, but 0.2 where it was thin or 0.3 where it was thin. And I thought, does that mean that they actually want it to to print in those parts where it's thinner and, and hope that it'll just be thin and fragile enough. So I decided to try it out. Now, my first print was I just put a low poly dyno and intersected it right with the egg. I made no attempt to keep it fully within the egg. And I used settings such that it would print all parts, even if it had to go single wall on those parts. The result was, um, well, it, it worked but it was very very hard to tear apart you really had to yank at that thing and tear it apart and so i thought do they not want it that way so i printed another one and in this one i put a different model and i printed it out and sure enough it cracked apart it was designed so that those thin parts would not print there and they would leave gaps between there but if that's the way it was designed then why not just put gaps there so i thought i'd give it a try at making one of my own and I put together a different sort of crack pattern and also I wanted to put my logo in it I'm not super humble so as you can see I started with Inkscape for the crack pattern that I wanted and then I brought it into blender but when you bring a curve into blender and then convert that curve to a mesh blender triangulates that curve as you saw very badly it just puts triangles anywhere at once. So the first thing I had to do is clear out those triangles, which I did with a limited dissolve. It's just basically a special delete tool. And now I'm adding back in the geometry the way I wanted with the knife tool. And I did the vertical and then I doubled up all those vertical. And then I'm going to do the horizontal and now it will have a very nice grid pattern that will curve and displace just the way that I want it to. So the next thing I have to do is use a curve modifier, or scale it up, and then use a curve modifier to wrap it around the egg and make it tile properly by scaling. Then apply that modifier and use proportional editing to get the egg more or less where I want it and use the shrink wrap modifier to get it exactly where I want it. 
Now here, I'm taking the top of the egg and I'm closing up the top. I have to add some geometry so that the shrink wrap does that nicely. And I found that this one was flipped when I created it. So I had to flip those normals so that the solidify modifier will go out the right direction. And that worked out just fine. Next, I need to Boolean off the bottom. I don't need to close the bottom because I'm just going to cut it off and make it flat. And then I Boolean out my logo. Then I use the logo. The logo I create from a second egg shape that I just solidify and then Boolean the logo out of that. And that first experiment was the crackable egg that I put on the video and had my kid take apart. It was super easy and I put inside of it a new model of my own creation. A cute little egg shaped bear that honestly I'm kind of <laughs> kind of enamored with these little bear animals. I, I kind of like them and I decided to keep on experimenting. Now these animals, I'm playing with a new sort of modeling technique where they're modeled in parts, but then also given color data. So theoretically, you could print them multi-material, which is what I did with this egg. Let's go up to the close-up camera for this one. So this egg was printed with multiple materials and the animal inside of it was also printed with multiple materials. But on this one, I tried to thicken up the walls because notice how it gets real thin at the top. And I also made it so it printed sideways instead of up and down because this animal is oriented horizontally. Now let's see if we can get inside here. Okay, kind of. Oh, that is not easy. If I were a kid, that would not be a lot of fun. So, okay, on this one, I, I played with making the uh, shell thicker. And I think that that was a mistake. It's, it's too, I don't know what, it's too tight. But let's get the little animal on the inside here. Did I leave enough gap on the bottom? Oh, wow, I may need to get some, some tools to disengage the animal here. All right. Hold on one second, Piggy. Handy dandy, five in one tool, 3D printer's best friend. Also a painter's best friend, but honestly, oh my goodness, I'm tearing up the Piggy. Well, I may have to play with tearing this apart a bit more off camera, because I also put the gap too close between here, I guess. But you can see, <sighs> oh, I'll get that later. It's a cute little piggy with a cute little piggy tail and the feet and the tail and the eyes were all printed in one material and the nose and the ears and the body were printed in another material. And if you had uh, an even bigger multi-material process where you could do five or ten or however many materials, you could potentially do this one with, you know, tail different color, ears different color, nose different color, eyes different color. You could go crazy with that entirely up to you. But there you go cute little piggy for that one. Now, like I said, I was designing these for a multi-material process and a full color printing process. So I thought I'd try one out on the Da Vinci color. So here's a new iteration where I increased the gaps between there. So hopefully it'll fall apart easier. My logo didn't quite come out as well and I didn't put color data on the logo on this test one, but let's see how difficult this is to break apart. Oh, oh yeah. See if I got the gap right on the bottom. See if it'll just pop off of that base. Well, oh yeah. Came off, I think it left maybe some of the color data on there, but overall, isn't that an adorable little sloth that I 3D printed here? So I've got cute little teddy bear, cute little piggy, and I am absolutely adoring the cute little sloth in this little set of animals. And I'll tell you what, I'm almost more excited by these cute little animals than I am about the egg that's going around them. But either way, I'm gonna get these files out there so that you guys can download them and print them just in time for Easter. I want you guys to be able to uh, start doing that and, and enjoy these. And I wanna thank very much AstroPrint for their crackable egg that got me started on this project. It was a lot of fun. Of course, I'm not the only person to have ever done a crackable egg, and even AstroPrint isn't the first person to have done one. I found one recently that was has been on my mini factory for years, so you could go check that out as well. And hey, maybe print it out in your Filament of the Month Club samples. You know, 
We've been going for a couple of months now on the filament of the month club and we've had color changing filament and we've had pretty glitter filament. And this month I sent people a filament, they call it buzzed PLA because it's made with some, some uh, processes from beer, but I don't care about that. What I care about is it's a beautiful speckled filament and and I, I printed this chess set from it. I really enjoyed the look of this and I hope that you do too but there will be some cooler filaments coming in the next couple of months. So if you're not in the Filament of the Month Club, sign up for that today. I really appreciate your support. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there.